how to be more stealthy with your Nmap scans. Now, I don't talk about the adversary side of things, simulating the adversary, the red teaming side, often on this channel, if ever at all. But I think it's important to uh, to know, even if you're just a pen tester, uh, certainly if you're on the defense side or whatever you want to do, it's at least good to be aware of this stuff. And uh, who knows, maybe you will find yourself doing some red teaming stuff uh, from wherever you are currently. So how do we actually be more stealthy with Nmap? Well, first, let's understand the base case of running an Nmap scan. What does it look like, right? So what's happening, first of all, with Nmap when we're running it, right? All it's doing is it's sending a bunch of requests, right, to the different sockets, right, to the uh, to the server on the port to see if it can form a a, a three-way handshake. But if you run it in the default without the uh, dash ST flag, it's actually going to do only part. It will never actually complete the three-way handshake. And one of the best ways to break down what a tool uh, is doing over, if it's running over the network, is to use Wireshark. So I have two systems here. I'll show this on screen so it makes a little more sense for you guys because this can get a bit confusing. We've got two servers. We got the attacker box and then this one right here that I'm on is my server. And these are the IP addresses so we know when we look. Uh, 29 is the server. 87 is the attacker's box in this example here. So I have Wireshark open. I'm filtering to only look at the requests coming from the attacker machine. Now, what's going to allow us to be stealthy is that, you know, of course, if you are if you know where to look as the defender, you'll be able to see the traffic because it's just TCP requests, right? But the benefit of, of this approach is that, you know, assumingly they won't know where to look, right? you'll just blend in with everyone else's normal traffic. And that's when it's going to get really difficult for uh, the defense to detect you. So, like I said, we'll look at the base case first. So, let's say we want to scan the server running, a, and we just run a basic Nmap scan, you know, the type of scan that we use a lot on this channel and most of you guys are probably used to, right? We'll even be more simple with this. We won't even run it with any flags or anything. We could run the dash SV dash SC. We're not going to do that. We're just going to run the regular Nmap scan that's going to, to uh, I believe, be at uh, level three, and it will uh, scan for the top 1,000 most common TCP ports. This is TCP, by the way, um, that we're going to start with, right? And going over to the Wireshark capture here, you can just see how many uh, requests were sent here. Now, keep in mind, I am looking at both the packets sent and received. So, <laughs> I don't know if you can see how small the scroll bar is over here. That's how many requests. So, because I'm monitoring both what is sent and received, uh, it's really, you know, our requests are going to be half of these, right? Because the other half is the server responding with, in many cases, reset ACK, which means the port is closed, or a uh, syn ACK if it's open. But, yeah, just scrolling down, you see how many of these requests are sent. And not only that, going back to Nmap here, this was all performed in literally like a quarter of a second. That's how many requests just flooded the server in such a short span of time. So obviously, if you are someone in the uh, network monitoring, right, even if you're not like a, a person, right, this is probably going to trip some alarms, some automated alarms possibly, right? Uh, if they are in place. And I mean, even if you're just someone that's a you know, network monitoring guy, you, this is probably going to catch your attention, basically, right? So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to blend in with all the normal traffic that's going on in the network. So how do we do that, right? This is the base case here. So out of that, there was one port open as well. Uh, port 8000 in this case. If we look at... Uh, all the port, uh, all the uh, requests sent by the server back to the attacker. We can see this one. Uh, where is it? Oh, the DNS request. But uh, 
You should see one on port 8,000. Let me just scroll for a sec here. This bar is just so small. Um, but yeah, all these are all the ports that are responding back saying the port's closed, the port's closed. And oh, there it is, this gray one right here. This was where it sent a uh, SYNAC request uh, about uh, port 8000 saying that it was open and was ready to uh, do the next step of the three-way handshake. Since we're running without the dash ST flag, we did not actually complete that handshake. We kind of left it hanging there. But yeah, don't want to get too much into that. Let's go and clear this out at this point, reset it. And how do we make this more stealthy, right? And so if we want to make this much more stealthy, what we can do is we need to adjust the aggressiveness. If we go into the man pages, so the default aggression is actually T3 for your end map scans. So that's what it was running since we didn't specify otherwise. Uh, let's see here. If I, if I go here, we can look at, um, yeah. Here we go. Here's where it says normal mode is the default, and so t uh, dash T3 does nothing. So if we did spe uh, specify, then it would do nothing. And here, here's your little um, descriptors of each one. So there's T0, which is, I would not recommend it. It is crazy, uh, crazy slow because it tries to be overly stealthy to the point that it's going to take you forever. Uh, even if you're doing red teaming, I wouldn't recommend it. Um and then there's T1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 being the most aggressive. So by default, it runs in what they call normal mode. If you do run in zero, that's paranoid mode. Uh, we'll run it in sneaky mode for this uh, example here, which is T1. T2 is polite. Uh, 4 is aggressive, and 5 is uh, insane. So... While the fine grain timing controls discussed in the previous section are powerful and effective, some people find them confusing. Moreover, choosing the appropriate values can sometimes take more time uh, than the scan you're trying to optimize. Yeah, so you gotta you gotta optimize for your situation. If you're just doing pen testing, like uh, like I'm doing on the day to day, I'm typically just running it at the default T3. Um, I'm you know maybe I would like to bump it up occasionally to uh, to aggressive, but yeah, I definitely wouldn't be turning it down if if uh, stealth is not your concern, right? And someone was recently asking in the comments section uh, about auto recon. A few people actually, they were asking, you know, would you recommend using this on every uh, system you encounter? And, you know, the answer, of course, is always it depends. If you are doing pen testing and stealthing, uh, stealthiness is not any concern, then yeah, you can use auto recon whenever you want. Um, but if you are doing some like red teaming activities, things where stealth matters, then you don't want to use auto recon. Believe me, because you're going to end up being super, super noisy and you're going to, you're going to get detected really quickly. Right? So yeah, basically it speeds up the scans as you see, let's try to slow it down and compare what it looks like. Uh, in Wireshark, right? So we're going to modify the previous command and we're going to say dash T1 for uh, sneaky mode. So we'll run that and just taking a look here, it takes a minute to even see the DNS, uh, the DNS request come through, which is the initial request that you'll always see. Well, maybe you won't even see it if you're running at T3 or higher because it comes in so fast. But here we go. We see... Uh, the DNS request come in, DNS query. And we still haven't even sent our first uh, packet. Now, if you can imagine how slow T0 is, being even slower than this, you know, you'll understand why I didn't choose it. Uh, but yeah, here we see that uh, we're making a, uh, a request for uh, this port here, um, 5900. And it's responding with, uh, hey, it's closed and 110, so on and so forth. And, you know, if this is, you know, here we're filtering for it. So, of course, we're seeing it, right? But if we're just monitoring the network in general um, as a defense guy, right, and there's all this normal traffic going on, you're a lot less likely to notice something like this, right? 
versus what we did before and literally in a quarter of a second sent all of our requests, right? A huge difference you can see already just by doing this. And there's a bunch of other flags that you can employ um, in Nmap just looking through the uh, manual page. But this, this setting right here single-handedly will make a huge difference in how stealthy you are in your initial reconnaissance when you're having to do active recon like this. So, yeah, hopefully this video helped you guys. And uh, if so, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button as well. And, yeah, consider joining the web app uh, pen testing course if you really want to dive into more web app stuff. But, you know, for right now, if you want to get right into another video, some more technical content, I got that on the screen right now. I'll see you guys over there. Thanks for watching.